And then after we saw this, we went to a, a view spot where we could see the North Korean city of Kisong. Um, and in that city, there's this giant flagpole, which actually ha hosts the biggest flag in the world. It's a 600-pound flag, and it's so heavy. For the most part, it doesn't flap in the wind. It just kind of sags, which is really sad, actually. It's kind of the whole point of a flag, to be able to wave. But, uh, yeah, so got to have a lot of pictures of that North Korean town, the largest flag in the world. Um, another fun fact, a lot of the buildings in that town are actually fake buildings. No one lives there. They were just made for show. Um, you know, because the South Korean side, we've been watching those buildings constantly. Not very many people moving around in that city. So, and like, they can like do x-ray reconnaissance, see what's in the buildings. They're nothing in the buildings. They're just hollow walls, which is kind of interesting. Alright, so after seeing this, we went to a site where a crazy event happened in 1976 called the Axe Murder Incident. Um, and in the past, before 1976, South Korean soldiers, North Korean soldiers, American soldiers kind of wandered around the JSA as much as they wanted. They considered it a mutually shared zone. But everyone was always really tense and kind of staring each other down. Um, and one day, uh, a couple of uh, American soldiers got the orders to cut down some branches on a tree because this tree was like blocking the view from where some of their guard po posts are. And uh, the soldiers go over, start cutting down the tree, and then they immediately are ambushed by like 30 North Korean soldiers. And these North Korean soldiers proceed to steal the axe out of their hands. And one North Korean soldier uses this axe and murders two American soldiers. Huge diplomatic incident, totally changed like all the rules of the JSA. Um, and the North Koreans' justification for killing those soldiers with the axe was because like, they were violating North Korea's environmental rights by chopping down a single tree in the JSA. Uh, pretty ridiculous, if you ask me. So after seeing the axe murder incident place, we went to where South Korea found a North Korean infiltration tunnel. So far they found four tunnels that North Korea was digging under the DMZ to be able to send their troops quickly into South Korea in the event of a war. Um, the tunnel's really deep, really far down. It was like... I don't know, five, well, not 500 meters down, but it was this, like, really steep slope. It was hard to walk down there. But anyway, we got to go down and uh, check out that tunnel. Um, I didn't take many pictures inside the tunnel, but uh, I, I took a couple, actually, of me just in a hard hat. Um, I had to bend over the whole time. It was a really tiny tunnel, not made for uh, giant foreign men like me. So, yeah, check out some of those pictures. Pretty crazy how North Korea is trying to cheat the DMZ and get their soldiers into South Korea in the event of a war. So then uh, the last thing we saw on our trip was this symbolic railway station that they built just to like show the desire for unification. Um, it's never really been used uh, by North Koreans. It's been used by South Koreans to go north. But um, North Koreans aren't coming into the country, that's for sure. So you can see the Baron Customs uh, place that's set up there. And it's, the station is depressing in a way because they built this railway station and no one's ever going to use it. But anyway, look at some of the pictures about it. But overall, it was a really fun trip. Uh, I got to learn a lot. Um, I thought it was just really interesting to see North Korea on the other side. And, I mean, it, I expected there to be, 
more militarization and more heavy weapons and all that stuff. I mean, supposedly it's the most heavily fortified border in the world. But I've seen the border between Tijuana and San Diego, and this board, like the San Diego Tijuana border, is like what, like seven fences, like giant light posts, um, you know, guard towers and border agents patrolling all the time. But uh, I guess it's just that South Korea has the DMZ, and they've got a triple layer electric fence. So you're not getting over that. Uh, <laughs> and maybe if America did the same thing, then there wouldn't be as big of an illegal problem. But hey, that's, uh, that's uh, I don't even want to get into that debate. Um, but uh, it's it, it just seemed to me, I expected there to be more tanks and, uh, I don't know, artillery positions and stuff like that. But th I didn't really see it. Um, it probably was like that right at the end of the Korean War. But over the last, what, 70 years, I think they've kind of relaxed a bit. But anyway, still scary. Uh, I thank all of the soldiers that are protecting us on the DMZ. Uh, makes, makes me feel a lot safer here in South Korea. And also, North Korea, I hate you. Finished. Peace out.